Okay, so Pi News episode 52, and I'm still very obsessed with 3D printing. Although I did discover that my garage probably is a bit too cold on some days. You can see that block failed, um, but I need to do some more testing on it. I've also been playing around with Octoprint, and uh, so this is my 1 gig Pi 4. Uh, I've got the official V2 camera, and uh, that's what's been monitoring my 3D printer in my garage. I'll show a bit more of that later on in the video. I was planning to use a Pi Zero 2W, but I didn't have the smaller cable that connects the camera. So I've ordered one of those, and that'll be coming soon. Anyway, let's get on with the news. I'm sure everybody's heard by now that the Raspberry Pi is 10 years old, and uh, there's been loads of great content, and I'm gonna concentrate on that first. Uh, so Tom's Hardware did the Pi cast with Evan Upton and Pete Lomas, who are the two founders of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And it was a really interesting interview. We got to see uh, Pete Lomas has the very first Pi, uh, and he showed it, he got it out of his safe and showed it in the video. Uh, it has a massive SD card slot and there was an interesting tale about the SD card slot. But I won't go through that, I'll let you watch the video. But yeah, really great to see the first one off the production line. A few interesting things that came out of it, they only planned to make 3,000 initially. And in the video, Eben admitted that he's a bit obsessed with Raspberry Pi Locator. Uh, so let's have a quick look at Raspberry Pi Locator. Oh, uh, oh Compute Module 4s. Uh, are often in stock. Pi Zero 2W is in stock. That was Switzerland, wasn't it? CH, I think I was, uh, I said it was China in one of my previous videos. But uh, yeah, I every now and then I just have a look at it, even though I don't need any more Pi's at the moment. I do have a look at it and it is, it is very addictive. Another thing that was interesting from it, uh, so Evan thought that no one would use the GPIO pins and obviously they've become a huge part of the Raspberry Pi to a lot of people. Next one, I saw this on Reddit today from Financial Times. And uh, it is a video about the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's an interview with Evan and Liz Upton, and uh, it is really interesting. There's more stuff worth looking at in that as well. Uh, I'm just gonna show a few stills from it. And it really goes on about the history of computers. The Zenex Spectrum, one of my favorite computers of all time, sold two million. The Raspberry Pi has sold over 30 million units, and obviously it's still growing. So I haven't watched the whole video yet, but I do plan to go through it after I've done this Pi News because, uh, yeah, there's really great content in there. The University of Cambridge also did a story on this, so if you'd rather read than watch videos, it, uh, it covers the 10 years of the Raspberry Pi. And in this article, it says the Pi has sold more than 40 million units, manufactured in the UK, and supports more than 300 jobs in Wales and Cambridge. Obviously plays a major part in education, a market worth of one billion created. Uh, yeah, definitely worth looking through that one. And also the Raspberry Pi Foundation did their own video and uh, kind of went through the whole history of the Raspberry Pi and why it came about and so on. And Evan mentioned in this video that the Pi 4B is approximately 40 times more powerful than the original Pi, but it still sells for the same price. Now, obviously, supply constraints aside, uh, it is still designed to sell at the same price as the original Pi, which I think is $35. And there's also a bit in the video that mentions about how many more people applied to Cambridge University to study computer science. Uh, it's gone from 200 to 1,400 applicants. Next up from Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi 4 in short supply, being scalped at 400% markup. With sales now exceeding 45 million units in its first decade, you'd be forgiven if you thought that the Raspberry Pi was immune to the global chip shortage. Sadly, this isn't the case as most major retailers in the US and UK are out stock of Raspberry Pi 4 models. Third-party Amazon sellers and eBay scalpers making the boards up as much as 400%. When asked by a viewer, when can we expect supply of the Raspberry Pi 4 to be back to normal? Upton initially quipped that he was stopping answering this question, but then went on to confirm that they were making around 500,000 Raspberry Pi computers per month, but there is a credible backlog of 1 to 2 million units. And they mentioned when we had the $10 price increase, uh, and that's why they went back to the 1 gig Pi 4, so they could still hit the $35 price point. UK Armour Farnell states there is a 372 day lead time. US customers with no stock expects until April the 17th, 2023. It is such a shame to see these prices. In fact, if I go to my channel, so this video here, look, price drop, Pi 4, 4 gig. Uh, and this was back, well, this was two years ago now. And uh, yeah, I managed to get a Pi 4 4 gig on eBay, brand new, and it was the Rev 1 2, which was the one that had the original Pi 4s, didn't work with some USB-C adapters. They did sort that out, and this Rev 1.2 uh, was one of the versions that had that. So yeah, £36. Another Tom's hardware, Raspberry Pi hat brings 5G to your projects. So you can see here, it's a 5G modem hat for the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you're looking for mobile data at super speeds, 
then uh, here's where to look. Although the kit will cost $595 with a modem. <laughs> oh dear. Next up, my wife and I uh, play Wordle every day. We wouldn't use this, but it is a very impressive project. So using a 3D printer and a Pi camera, it works surprisingly well. So it even actually touches the screen uh, and uh, does the whole process itself. Let's see a little tiny bit of it. Yeah, so you can see the little stars. I won't play all of it, but you can see the little stylus putting in the word, recognizing the word and working out what the solution would be. Yeah, very impressive. Another Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi Pico Log Student Attendance. Uh, so this is a really impressive build. Raspberry Pi Pico Kit is everything you need to make a smart attendance log. So for checking in students and employees and all the bits and all the information if you want to build one yourself are all in the story. And there's a video explaining it all as well. Last story, uh, I really like this. This is uh, for an office that doesn't have a window and it's a live stream camera that shows in what looks like a window. And uh, yeah, I quite, I quite like that, a view of the outside world. And it's definitely made me think because I've been using Octopi and the Pi's camera to be able to view my 3D printer in the garage. And uh, I definitely need to look at some sort of ring doorbell equivalent, but one that you don't have to pay some sort of monthly fee or pay for cloud storage or something like that. So I'm gonna definitely have a look at that. Especially now my uh, little cable has arrived to attach my Pi Zero 2W to my camera. And here's the cable. Uh, and I'm hoping the cable will fit into this case. You can see there's a camera slot in there. Uh, my Pi Zero 2W and that little cable hopefully will all work together. In the meantime, I just uh, attach this camera to this plastic box and I've been using it in my garage to monitor my prints. Um, but uh, I think the garage is probably a bit too cold because a few of them weren't sticking to the bed. But I had just the ordinary USB A to B cable plugged into the printer and Octoprint worked fine. I'm just going to plug this in but not into the printer just to show you how the camera works because I thought it was pretty impressive. So let's plug this into one of these sockets. Actually, interestingly, I mentioned about the USB-C cable. My uh, MacBook charger didn't power this Pi 1, so it must be one of the original ones because uh, it's got the older version 1.1 firmware in it, which didn't work with some, I think it's power delivery USB-C devices. So if you do get a Pi that doesn't boot up, try a different USB-C adapter, uh, because if it's one of the old ones, that was one of the problems that they had, but that was that was a long time ago now. Right, so this is plugged in, you can see it's it pointed at the picture on my wall. So if I go and get my iPad, and I call up my browser and Octoprint, so it's not gonna say it's connected to my printer, but you can see it's actually showing what's on my wall. Uh, and you can do a time-lapse recording of this as well, so you can set it up that it does a time-lapse of your 3D print but it doesn't even need to be connected to your 3D printer at all. You can just use this as a camera and uh, well, if I move it, you'll see that it, it works absolutely fine. It's pretty clear actually. Uh, and I did have a lack of light in the garage, but I'm gonna sort that out. The other thing I found, and I'll go back onto the Pi for that, was this camera mount uh, for a Raspberry Pi Zero W. So it's 3D printed and you can see that it's, uh, it's like a ball and socket joint and then you attach it to probably some other existing case. Well, the case that I've already printed out would work with that. And uh, then you can move it, it's all posable. And uh, that works well for me because I've got a, a window next to my front door where I can get power to, but the front door is in a porch, so there isn't any power, so I've been running cables and things like that. But I thought that was a really nice idea. I like the way it's got a little bit of a cable tidy there as well. And this was the other one, Pi Zero W security camera. And uh, so it's got the sort of visor on it and you can see all the inputs and everything. But I thought this was a rather nice design. Uh, you can see the camera in the front. It looks like it may be the same sort of camera as I'm using. Uh, a bit of ventilation there. But uh, yeah, this Thingiverse is, is incredible. There's so many different things you can do on here. So I was determined to try and use my Pi more with my 3D printer because I ended up using Windows just because it was the easy option because there was already software available. Um, but uh, thanks to Pi Apps, two of the main things that everybody seems to use are on here. So open SCAD, this is a way of creating 3D models from scratch, but also editing ones that are on Thingiverse that are made to be edited. The other piece of software on there is Cura, and Cura is a way of taking these models and then converting them for use on your printer. And uh, it didn't actually support my printer straight out, but uh, I did manage to find a GitHub which had the drivers to be imported into Cura. And all I did was downloaded the zip file and dragged that zip file into an open version of Cura. So when it was in this state, 
I dragged the file in and it said, do you want to import it? And I imported it and now you can see my printer is showing Neptune 2. Mine's a 2S, but it doesn't seem to matter. It seems to work fine. And if you wanted to print an item, you can just drag it in. And if it's compatible, it will show up and you can zoom in and you can move it around and you can slice it. Uh, so that's creating that printer file. And you can even do little tweaks and things on it uh, as to the speed and uh, temperature and all sorts of things. And it basically tells your printer what to do. But the other one I managed to install was OpenSCAD. Uh, and here you can see this image. Now, if you import the editable block, uh, which is uh, available on Thingiverse, in fact, have I got Thingiverse on here? Yeah, this one here. Uh, go into the download all files. And if I download this Lego brick, you can see it's downloading now, the one with SCAD on the end of it. Open up OpenSCAD and just do new for now. And if I do uh, open file, go into my downloads, you can see text brick comes up and look at all the things you can change on the side here. I, I was just amazed at how well this worked on the Pi. So I can tilt it around and I can see every element of it. Um, but what I did uh, was changed a few things. I need to make this a bit, I need to move this over a bit so I can see these values. So brick length, I made it a bit longer. So you can see I've changed it to seven. Brick width, I changed it to one. So it'll be a single row of bricks now. Uh, left the brick height as it was. And then you can see down here, this is where you put your text in. So if I put in Leap ESP video, press return, you can see that it comes up. And we can also change it from raised to recessed. We can then render that file under design and render. As you can see, it's doing its process down here, 480 out of 1000. It's a bit slower than my Mac, but it does work. And this is on my four gig Pi, by the way. Uh, I'm using this four gig Pi in my new heatsink case. And once that's all done, we can then export it. So if I export it as STL, because I know that STL works with my Cura software. So let's hit save, let's, yeah, let's save it there. LeapSPBrick.stl, save that in downloads. I can close this down now. Well, I guess that's saved. And open up Cura. Then I can open that file, go to my downloads. That's the one. If we hit slice, we can then play around with it. And you can see that it is the recessed version. And then I can save it for a file that's ready for my printer. And I can either upload that with Octoprint or I can put it on the SD card, put it in the printer and then it will do it for me. But yeah, I'm just, just very impressed that all this works so well on the Pi. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.